The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman, Tiger Technician's Hour, Tuesday, the 23rd of April. Gosh, April's going quickly. And uh, thanks, Steve, for two great hours. Don't forget, straight after this show, we've got the Options Hour. I'm not sure if Victor Jones is doing it, but uh, Options Hour coming up. Fabulous show, just a great show. If you if you do anything with options, absolutely, this is the, the show you want to, to uh, tune into. And more importantly... I, I happen to just, I used to do more complex things, but for years I just haven't done anything other than naked calls and naked puts. Um, that is, I, there is no uh, there is no other side to it. It either works or doesn't work. And usually I, I'm looking at very tiny price in the in the in the teens or maybe the twenties, twenty cents or fifteen cents, twelve cents, or even less, five six cents. And it's more like a white lightning trade, um, but this is this is. I, I'm going to say more advanced rather than sophisticated. It's just more advanced. You know, as you as you do something over and over, very often you want to experiment to be able to get a, a perspective on um, the opportunities that can occur if certain price movements unfold in a particular stock. And uh, it's just a great way to do it. Another way to do it, of course, is to use uh, what Daryl Martin uh, does, his diagnostic hour. And uh, Tom and uh, Daryl are going to be having a show May the 11th. Uh, yeah, two, two Saturdays time, three Saturdays time, or May the 11th. Four hours. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's going to be very full. So please sign Go to the front page, sign up. And what that does is... Uh, Daryl's developed a program whereby you can use the uh, parameters of overbought, the different levels of deviations, etc. And he teaches you how to use those. And in other words, on a day like this, just let's say the back of your mind, they thought there'd be a rally, but you weren't really sure and you wouldn't know for a certain while. So you could put in a trade for a certain number of hours. You can even play both sides. Say it's fifteen dollars on the negative side. That's exactly what you know you're going to lose. And say twenty-five dollars on the upside, which is what you could lose. Well, that's a ten-dollar differential. But the most important thing about it is that you can extrapolate from that a percentage gain that could be much, much greater. So you could even give up the one side because the other side more than makes up for. Or, and this is the fascination with this particular technique. You could do both sides. In other words, it could work one way until 11.30, say, in the morning. And all of a sudden, by noon, the market's doing something completely different. And then you're going to garner all that benefit by still being in the trade on the other side. So I think that's something to go to the front page. Check it out. It's here in Massachusetts area. It's going to be in Burlington, I believe. Yep, I think it's in – well, check it out. I believe it's in Burlington, but check it out. Burlington's on the 128 belt. Um, the high tech belt uh, of of Massachusetts, really the ring that the half circle that goes from the coast on the north side to the south side or south side to the north side. So uh, check it out. I think you'll find that it's it's really worthwhile. Now, of course, you got Dave White and you got Tom O'Brien right at the end of the day. I mean, who better to wrap up the market than Tom O'Brien? Um, so t Tuesday today, let's get to the markets. Dow's up a little. Yep, it's up 139 at 14,705. The S&P is up 13. Finally, they're in sync. In fact, the Dow is a little bit on percentage terms. The Dow is fractionally higher, 0.02 higher than the S&P. That's nice for a change. Um, the Comp Index is up 36, lagging a little bit because of Apple, 32.70. You've got gold down 12, 14.08. You know, we were in the trade. We took a, a what, 20 cent loss. What was that? Less, about 0.8%. Just a, a mere nothing loss. And thank goodness, because that stock, gold stock, is now trading way lower than when we when we uh, bought it. Uh, I just did not trust it. Put that tight stop in, got taken out. That's it. Case closed. I do not mind doing that. Today we took a one percent loss in the stock. Um, in fact, I'll tell you what it was. It was ISRG. Why? Because I believe that this stock is going to go lower. I expected some kind of a bounce. I gave it a little bit of leeway. One percent. So we took a one percent loss. I still think I'll be right 
I just didn't want to hang around. I probably should have I should have expected a higher bounce than we got uh, to to enter the trade. Then we would still have been in the trade. Hey, it tells me the fact that it's acting like it is, telling me that this is a stock I must keep my eye on for the short side. Took a uh, entered at four seventy four point ninety eight and got taken out for a four point seventy loss. That's one percent in a stock like that. One percent is absolutely nothing, but it was the gesture that I wanted. Uh, fortunately, we have a stock that we just entered this morning, and that is up about 4%. So, you know, you've got to, you've got to look at it in the, in the sense of um, what, what, what is being offered on the upside and the downside, how you can best use that. Now, one short that we had, we took a one-point profit off the holding it short for a couple of weeks, in fact. Um, I still think it's going to go much lower, but a one-point profit... Hey, I, 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 we'll be back. That's all I can say. And uh, what's what's going on in the goals? I wanted to mention that because the GLD, to stop for a moment to show, the GLD didn't even get to the nine period exponential moving average. It got repelled. But the major factor is that the MACD, the fast moving average of the MACD, if you're looking at my chart, it's always the one on the left, that MACD has not yet turned positive, even though the histogram is moving up. So I'm not pre prepared to say that gold hasn't made some kind of what I call a climactic volume spike low. It's just the entry and specifically where you should go. My 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 thinking now is that you trade either the GLD or its its partner, which is a, uh, about a tenth the price. Um, and that's going to be important because if you if the candle that's forming this week so far compared to the candle last week, says there is some strength. And all I'm looking at is some kind of a counter trend move to the upside. But I don't really see anything yet. The gold stocks are not acting like they should. So I, I'd be hesitant to do anything except treat it as a quick trade. Uh, so that's that. Silver is down 54 cents at 22.77. Now we've got platinum a down 16 again, 14.17, and copper is now 3.10. Wow, copper just keeps going down. down. i got to look at this, and then we're going to go to our call. So HGM, uh, I want it N. That's July, copper, HGN, 13. That's where I get it. Making lower lows. Oh, my goodness. And it's testing on the left side. It's testing. See, this is, oh, man, this is one fascinating market. Uh, I hope I have time today or tomorrow to outline my, my thinking on the Dow in, in clearer terms. I've, I've given the parameters, but there's a particular technique that I'm looking at here in the Dow. Let me just move this away. It's called the Chapman Wave Flat Base Restart. And that is a whole bunch of specificity that goes with it. That, to me, is the possible outlook that we've got here. And it says we could rally for a, a, a little while longer, but the correction that we will get after the next, if there's a new recovery high, and if that starts to fail, there's certain things that I'll be looking for. If it fails sooner, there are certain things that I'll be looking for. If it powers above, uh, the Dow powers about 14,930, then there's something else that I'm looking for. It all fits in. It's just that this is going to be a fascinating, fascinating period coming up because we are looking at stocks like, I need to just grab this for one second, uh, like, like, a, like a Johnson & Johnson. Now, Johnson & Johnson has just screamed, look at that beautiful weekly chart, walk in the 9, it isn't walk in the 9 EMA. It's not even touching the 9 EMA. And the monthly chart is way, the 9 EMA is at 75.45, that's the exponential moving average. The price is at 85.29, and the daily is going to, I'm calling this leg C for now. Um, so we're getting into areas that don't say, uh, Johnson Johnson could pull back 3% or 5% or 15 or 25. It just says stocks like Johnson Johnson, the defensive food area and um, cosmetics and uh, um, kind of healthcare products, they're becoming extremely overbought. So now we're going to go to uh, bonds, which are down a penny at 148.04. And crude oil is unch And we've got the final, which is the dollar, which is at up 25 cents at 83.07. Let's go to Freeman in Dallas. Hi, Freeman. How are you? Hello. Hi, Freeman. Hi. Hey, how are you? Pretty good. How's it going? Uh, I brought um, that 
F L I R as a bounce on yes. uh, I saw it over the weekend, then I bought it yesterday and I, I just discovered uh it's reporting earnings on Thursday. And also if you got time, I, I don't know if you can put this all together. I'm also holding Ford. I'm I'm up about twenty percent. They got earnings tomorrow. And that that position I got yesterday, we talked about yesterday, FSL, free sale. Yes. They reporting earnings on Thursday, and I, I was reading about the fundamentals. The CFO sold about half of his shares on last week. Okay, so, so let's do one thing at a time. Here we go. FLIR, uh, FLIR Systems, Electronic Systems, uh, Missile Defense, um, trading right now at 24.27. It's up 31 cents. Now, one of the things that uh, we're looking at here is how the 200-period exponential moving average is such an important uh I would even call it an indicator or a tool that one can use. And what happened is that Fleur came down from 27, let me just double check the high. It was 2716, uh, 2716. And that was, uh, that was in February around the February the 19th, and it's gone all the way down to the low just uh, four days ago, three days ago, of 2333. So that's four. Uh, what is that? It's about um, 2313. So you've got yourself less than four points down, which makes it about, what, about 18% or something like that. Now, what's very important about this is going straight for the nine period exponential moving average. When do you say earnings are coming out Thursday? Yes. Okay, then this is wow. From the and from that, the also, this company is the one that I remember the helicopter in uh, in Boston that had the camera thing. That's the company yeah. that makes that. So I'm thinking maybe there's going to be a lot of interest in that for, for maybe a, a lot of cities are going to try to buy their stuff. I'm not sure. Okay, so let's let's do this. We can, we'll talk about the maybes, but let's talk about the specifics. I just want to quickly grab the weekly chart A B C. D, E, and F, and within three bars, it makes a G. It's called in the chapter wave a smooth B, a G. Oops, I put an R by mistake. If you're not looking, you can type the wrong letter. Uh, and that goes to a down arrow. There we go. Okay. So, folks, this is what we're looking at. There's a cup formation with a potential handle being made. Not one of my favorite patterns, but it also depends on the technicals. Everything about this chart says counter trend rally in the daily which is exactly what you were, you timed very nicely for an entrance. But most importantly, what we're looking at is that the resistance, the very strong resistance in the 2833 to 20, uh, 27 to 2833 area, that's already been hit at peak E in the Chapman wave. Now it's pulling back. So there are a couple of things that I'm going to recommend that, we, that you do and how you handle it, because everything about this says, unless it's an upside surprise, there should be more weakness going down to the 20 to 21 area. So let, let's look at it as if, what would happen if there was an upside surprise and how you can handle it. I'll be back okay. with Freeman from, the, uh, Freeman from Dallas straight off this. We're looking at FLIR, and we'll be back. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investments, and whether you're bullish or bearish on U.S. Treasuries, the ETFs from Direction Shares are there to help you magnify your perspective. Bull ETFs for a rising market and bear ETFs for a falling market. Direction Shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC.
with the launch of Tiger TV. TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesavento, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. McEwen Mining is a high-growth, mid-tier producer in the Americas with a market capitalization of $1 billion. Experienced mining executive Rob McEwen, as chairman, CEO, and president, owns 25% of the outstanding shares of McEwen Mining and has put in place an ambitious business plan with the goal of qualifying for inclusion in the S&P 500 by 2015. With $70 million in cash and liquid assets as of the end of 2012 and completely debt-free, McEwen Mining is poised for growth. Production in 2013 is forecasted to grow at 24%, reaching 130,000 gold equivalent ounces. And over the next three years, McEwen Mining projects that their production will increase to 290,000 gold equivalent ounces, almost a three-fold increase from last year's totals. If you'd like to find out more about McEwen Mining, click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE or TSX under the symbol MUX. Who says you can't take it with you? TFNN says you can. With your mobile device and TFNN's live radio streams, TFNN has put it all in the palm of your hands. No special apps to download. No subscription fees for live radio or Tiger TV streams. We say you can. Now let's go over to the dollar because the dollar is going to be the generator. It is the generator of basically higher dollar, lower market. And what the dollar has done, and this whole uptrend, folks, has just gone sideways. The way it works, folks, is this. We say you can. The Tiger Financial News Network. Smart investors and professional traders know you can. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Basil takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Hi, folks. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians. Uh, we are back, and we are on with Freeman in Dallas, and we're looking at FLIR. Let me just get back to FLIR chart right now. F-L-I-R. So this is the way we're going to do it. I'm going to recommend that you use this with a trading stop right now. It's acting really nicely, acting very strongly. And what if you can get 4% by tomorrow afternoon or Thursday at noon, although we've got to anticipate the market will have a pullback in the next day or two after it's had some fabulous days. It's also got – this is the 15th Tuesday – Consecutive Tuesday, I believe, I might be wrong, I think it's 15th, um, if there's an update today, let alone a plus 137 as it is now in the Dow, but if there's an up session. So you've got to expect some kind of a pullback in the next day or two. Now, what I was going to recommend is that you keep half the position and you let yes. it go into earnings, which is after the bell on Thursday, right? Yeah, yes. If you have four, if you have a, say a four percent gain, I would take half off as you're going into the close. If the, if it gets close to twenty four forty two, which is the nine period exponential moving average, you'd be risking your profits. But if correct, you're in the right uh, you're in the right area for a punch to the twenty five oh one, maybe even the twenty five fifty area. So I don't know if you actually want to risk that or you want to just say, look, if I can get 35 to 4% in three or four days, you don't mind doing that every week, right? 
I do not. I do not at all. <laughs> so that might be the other thing. Take it all off and say, you know what, if it, if it spikes to the upside, that's great because it's telling me that on the next pullback I could buy it. I have, I have no risk at all. I just have a risk of making more. And if it, um, if it actually drops sharply, you'll be saying, hey, I'm out the stock. I've made my money. So maybe that for your – the way you trade, it might be just best to treat it as 120-minute trade. And the 120-minute trade, it is in leg – um, A, let me double check. Yeah, it's in leg B right now. And if this continues and the stochastic and the MACD do well. See, we can't do anything about the earnings, the perception of what the earnings are related to its um, market direction. It's beyond us. It could come out with great earnings and then say, but the, the, the next quarter could be difficult. And then all of a sudden, what was looking great overnight by the early morning, it's on its way down again. So... I would rather have you, if you can get that profit, take, or you could take profit on three quarters as, as an experiment. You could say, you know what, I've made enough. It actually gives back my profit. That's okay because I'll have one third left. If it actually spikes higher, it'll allow me to enter the next bit, go back again on a pullback. So there are different ways of thinking about it. Maybe on Thursday we can look at it again. But in the meantime, I would say have a trading stop on half, let it ride, and as you get closer to the earnings report, maybe the wisest thing will be to take your profit and then just re-enter on whatever it does after that. You don't want to enter if it gaps down, but you do want to think of entering if it gaps up. So I hope that helps you. What was the other question? If I can get to it, I'll look at it. Uh, uh, FSL, the C CFO sold half of his, uh, his position, the CFO, last week, and they got earnings on Tesla as well. This is Sassel? No, FSL, Freescale. We looked at it yesterday, remember? Oh, 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 yes. yes yeah. uh, Freescale. Oh, man. Well, I keep putting in the wrong symbol. SF. Freescale is FSL. There, I kept putting an S instead of an F. Yes, oh, uh, almost the same thing. Um, it's going very nicely right now. I would, I would try to write it up and just have a trading stop. It's almost the same chart formation. So, okay, that's fine. Okay, thank you so much for calling. Let's go to Mike in New York. Hi, Mike. How are you? Good, Basil. Um, could you have a look at Henry Schein, please? Uh, Henry Schein. So I've got Henry Schein right now. Um, this is a stock that over the years, you know, this one and what's the other one? I can't remember his name. Also, um, Ah, they used to be here in the, in the mall in, in Chestnut Hill. Um, home furnishings and cutlery and stuff like that. Also, I remember the guy always always interviewed. He's a fantastic CEO, and I just I can't remember that right now. I'm I'm, I'm blanking out on the name of the company. Um, and they they just do so well when when the housing sector is coming, you know, doing well because why? Um, so Henry, oh Henry Shine is the dentist. Yeah, they're the healthcare. Uh, yeah, now I remember he's from South Africa. That's why I remember it so well. The CEO is. I recognize his accent every time. I've always every time I write down his name, and I make a big note of it. In fact, I've got it on the left side here. I'm, I'm sure if I turn enough pages, I will see the interview that I saw um, him have. Yeah, Henry Shine, H S I C. Different, different sector altogether. His um, name is Stanley Bergman. That's it exactly. Um, from South Africa, I recognize the accent. So, okay. This is looking fabulous, except it is getting right to an area where it's bumping into very strong. Ah, it's worth looking at this. We'll be back, folks. We're looking at Henry Shine, 89.95, down 70 cents, HSIC. We'll be back with Mike and Mark straight off the spring. No matter where you listen to TFNN programming, we want you to know you can always access your favorite shows on demand through TFNN.com. TFNN airs live programming every market day from 9 a.m. till 6 p.m. Eastern. And you can view each program by accessing Tiger TV through our homepage. We even have an easy link for all mobile devices, including iPhones and iPads, located at the top right-hand corner of the TFNN homepage. You can use your smartphone to view Tiger TV, but if you don't have a mobile connection that can keep up with streaming live video, then you can simply visit TFNN.MOBI in the browser of your smartphone for live streaming audio of all of our programs. The mission of TFNN is to educate our audience directly and interactively through our interactive website and radio call and talk shows. TFNN is able to teach all levels of investors the technical skills needed to trade in today's marketplace. 
In order to get the best information possible, TFNN has assembled the most respected financial minds in the country to provide the most current news and comprehensive advice available. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, gives you Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. With Market Insights, nothing is left to guessing. With the market at record levels, volatility is here, and now is a perfect time to take advantage of a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights. As recently as March 26th, Tom advised his subscribers to liquidate their four short-term equity holdings, closing out all four positions for a combined 15.9% profit. And on April 1st, Tom advised his clients to sell their longer-term position in AIG warrants, locking in more than a 40% profit in just that one trade. If you'd like to see the kind of newsletter Tom O'Brien sends out to his subscribers each morning, then sign up for your two-week free trial to Market Insights today by visiting the front page of tfnn.com. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. This segment is brought to you by Harmony Gold. For more information, just click the Harmony Gold banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour, and this is a Tuesday edition, uh, April the 23rd. And uh, we have on the line, we have Mike in New York, and we're looking at HSIC. That's Henry Schein. Dental offices, I don't know exactly what they talk, uh, what it's called, but uh, major force in the area and for a long time. If you look at the monthly chart, you can go back. I, I've got it on my the black background charts notated because I followed this company for literally uh, 1996 it came public and I've been following it since at least uh, 2001 or two or something like that. Well, it has this extended move to the upside and then takes a real beating to the downside. It goes from 63.62 back in January of 08 down to the 200 period exponential move air, moving average of 30 to 18, almost a 45% decline. Then it goes again and then goes to a peak E um, in July of 2011, 74.98. Pulls back it's just in two months, it comes right back to 58.50. So now it's climbing again, it's going to D. And the history of this, I can't do it quick enough here, is A, B, C, uh, is that a D, E, A, B, C, D, E. Yeah, the history of this is that it goes to a D or an E and then it pulls back. Well, it's gone to a D and it looks like it wants to pull back. The MACD and the stochastic in the, in the monthly chart are still excellent. So I don't have any signal yet other than to say my eye says 
anybody's eye says is kind of overbought on the upside. Overbought doesn't mean to say that it has to go down. It just means that it's in an area where the, the technical considerations are now extended beyond what they normally are. That's really what it means. And now you've got the, a peak E established in the, uh, in the, in the weekly chart at 92.90 back um, on the, the week of the 5th of April. But then what happened is it made just a fractional new, uh, I just missed a new recovery high at 92.79. The next week, that's 11 cents lower. Now, you know, I have a technique that I've been working on for at least a year, over a year which I, I call it the two-bar failure, and that really occurs in the monthly charts. But I've been putting it to work in daily and weeklies for to experiment, to see how it works in other time frames. I'm going to be watching this real closely because it looks like this week it's at 89.99. If it closes underneath 89 in the next two, three days, and on a weekly basis, if it closes underneath for the very first time, underneath 90.30, let's call it, That'll be the first time it's closed under that since it broke out um, above it back uh, in the week of the 9th of November of 2012. So this is looking fantastic, except you can now see the fast moving average has dipped to negative while the week has just begun. So they can't talk about it as if it's the final day of the week, but it is dipping down. It has gone negative right now. And the stochastics at 85% still good, but turning down on balance volume, turning down and relative strength is also turning down. So I'm watching this real closely now. In fact, I'm putting on my, on my list in red, and I'm a little surprised that I'm doing that because I wouldn't expect in this environment that a company like this should be benefiting from the higher stock market. So HSIC. Now I'm going to ask you, although I got to guess what I, <laughs> what are, what are you doing with this? Uh, well, you're you're correct. I'm short. Okay, you um, know. You, you it, can make it, it, it looks like a hat trick uh, on the verge of a hat trick. Yeah. Well, no, I would say that it, the monthly chart is still too strong to be able to guess to say uh, that. But what I would say, it looks like it's ready for a digestive phase, and that phase could test the low bar of 86.67 back in the week of the 1st of March. Uh, three points, that's not a three, four points, that's not a big deal. But if it takes that out that all of a sudden you're looking at very little support on the downside. But let me make it real easy for you. Okay. The high of um, the 2nd of April was 92.90. That's an all-time high. The very next date opens at 92 round number, and it closed only once above 92. That was on the 92.34 on the 11th of April. I'm going to say to you that if you are short, 92 is the number to watch. If it closes above that for two out of three sessions, then you've got to say to yourself, uh-oh, that weekly chart is going to be repair itself, and the monthly chart still hasn't given a signal. So that's very easy for me. What I would say to you is if it closes, it can't go underneath, it has to close underneath 89 39. I'd say 89. If it closes under 89 39, the next rally is an is a p opportunity to, to add a little bit to your short. But at this particular point, either you do one of two things. You add a short right now at 89.91, and you make 92.01, you stop. Hey, that's nothing for an $89 stock. But I can tell you why. The MACD is bad, the stochastics bad, and the 120-minute chart is, is still pointing down. It's, it isn't making a low yet. So that's why I would recommend to you. And then this trading position allows you the freedom to say, I've got my core position, I'm going to treat this as a trading position, and I'm going to go in and out, and every time it gets to support, the very next support will be at 80, 87, 90, and you can take, you know, that, that could be your, the way you position yourself. So, and I, I, I would still treat this as more a shorter term, maybe intermediate term, because the monthly chart hasn't given the signal yet. Okay. Hope that helps you, Mike, and congratulations. Good eye. Thanks for bringing it to my attention. Okay. All right. Let's, let's go to Mark in Denver. Hi, Mark. How are you? Good, Basil. How are you doing today? I'm, I'm very well, and I'm very upset about the stock that you're about to ask me about. You're about to ask me about – what is the stock that you're going to ask me to look at? Lionsgate Entertainment, LGS. Yeah, folks, you know, this was the easy pick. This was just – They've got some fantastic movies going on. I don't even know the names. I, I went to a movie the other day. We were talked into it. Um, I'm just not a very big movie goer, and I'm always complaining about the movie. And believe me, did I complain about this movie? Something about um, 
I can't even remember what it was. Um, but it was very upsetting. Um, very well acted, but ugh, didn't like the theme. Now, you see that the top is making a kind of a W formation, which yep. could turn into an M formation. But so far, at a high-level consolidation, when you've got the... Um, now, this is one that you've been long, right? No, I was actually trying to decide whether it's breaking out today or topping out. And I was trying to figure out which way to go with it or not do anything at all. Oh, okay, okay. Because... You had brought this up once before. No, I have never actually. Oh, just, uh, I'm trying. I'm trying to think. Someone had brought it up. I do know that we have someone in the den who always brings it up, who's been okay. long the stock, and I'm wrong and he's right because I keep saying, "Wow, it's, uh, it's overextended." Yeah, but I, I this... actually read it. Read it. There's a guy I read um, in addition to your newsletter who who was looking at um, going short this thing, and I just couldn't quite see what he was seeing. I just wanted to see what your thoughts were. Well, I tell you what, when. 2419. Let's just make it real easy. This is in leg E up in the weekly chart. The nine period moving average has just been unbelievable support. The monthly chart has the same look as Coca Cola or what was I looking at? Johnson and Johnson. But there's a big difference. The MACD in the monthly chart is still expanding, and the stochastic is is just now settling in the 90% area, 97%. That's number one. Number two is I've made it a rule, and I, I invariably break the rule once or twice, but very not much more than once or twice. Now it's every, every long period when I break the rule. When I'm on the edge and I say it to myself, and this would be when I'm trading the futures, I could go long and I could go short, and then I make a decision. That is just wrong thinking. Yeah. I mean, either it's long or it's short. And right. if it does do a certain thing, then it means it can go even longer. And if it right. goes on the upside, if it does something else, it means then you can make your decision. But don't make your decision on the cusp just to be a hero to say, man, I timed that perfectly because let me tell you something. This stock is making a pattern right now that says if Lionsgate LGF trading at 2406, if it goes into the 20, 2470 to 2520 area, I'll have no choice but to count it as 22, 25, 22, as A, B, as a potential leg C or something, which means it could go even higher. And at that point, I would say I've got direction, and if the stochastic and MACD are starting to fail in the daily, they haven't crossed positive, which I think they will, or if the stochastic, which is only at first. This is what I wanted to talk about. I'm so pleased you brought it up. I've just drawn a rectangle formation, but basically that's not what I should be doing. I should be drawing a cup, which looks a little bit like a heart, or is it a lung? It looks a little bit, there you are. And it's like two Vs stuck together rather than two Us. That can be a very powerful pattern if it breaks to the upside because it becomes a cup and ladle breakout pattern, which is one of my, my favorites. Right. That says you could still go to a D. My on-balance volume is very uh, extended. But if you're looking at the MACD and the stochastic, which had a full-blown, if you asked me and said, there's a stock that's trading at 24.15, and the MACD and stochastic are looking good. They, aren't, they haven't tested the previous highs, but they're still quite good. I would say, hey, this thing's coming down because there's going to be a right arm, uh, a right shoulder failure in the technicals. And I would, and you said to me it was a twenty-four fifteen, and then you told me, asked me two days ago or three days ago, you'd say, "Hey, the stochastic is now at um, <laughs> the stochastic's at twenty-one percent, and the MACD is broken down completely." Where do you think the stock is? I, there's just no question in my mind. Ten to twelve percent would have been the minimum that I, th I would have thought it's pulled back. Right. So now, we're, now let's look at the analysis. Now you're going to say, "Whoa." That's very strong because it didn't do that. But it also says on the next move up in the stochastic and the MACD, if the price does not move together with the technicals going higher, that's, that's that balloon that I talk about where the hot air fails and the balloon still stays up. Suddenly the hot air comes back, and yet the balloon only goes up a fr just a little bit higher. That says it's, it's met resistance. It also says it's got support. Here's my thinking. I would do nothing with it. For those folks who are still long, congratulations. Fantastic way of, of, of trading this beast. It's just on the upside. is A lion is really what we should call it. It's been just roaring ahead. 
But it is getting a little toppy, but there are no signals yet. And what I will say to you is, let's watch it. Give me a call in case I forget about it. But if this okay. thing goes to 20, today's to high is 24.19. It's up 1.39%. Yeah. Can, can you believe that? So that 19 puts it over the 15 of... And the 12. The, and the 12 of the 28th and the, uh, the, yeah. the 10th of, of April. So that says to me, it's acting very well. But I have to get the price break to the upside because that MACD could, in fact, deflect lower. And the stochastic is only 55. It should really be 78 to 83 percent. So I think you've got your eye on the right thing. But I'd avoid making a decision until it – you know what? What's the big deal if it actually misses? You miss the exact top and it comes back. And this time it breaks 22, 25. Now yeah. you can say, aha. Now the weekly is giving this kind of information. Now I could pull back another two points or something like that. Yeah. But the strongest stock, one of the strongest stocks in the market, I'd hesitate at this particular point to short it for that reason, for the, for the cup formation, which is really a W formation, and the weekly bouncing off the 9 EMA. Have a little pay. Now, the other question is to go long. Well, yeah, if you're doing the 120-minute chart, and you're going to just do a quick A, B, no, the 120-minute chart also says peak D or E. You've got to be a little bit careful. I would just hold off. Hold off, and, okay. And, and I, you know what? This is a fabulous-looking stock. This might be one that you actually don't want to short. You want to wait for it to pull back between 22 and 21 or maybe 21 and a half and oh 19 and a half, oh, just 20 and a half. And then consider whether you actually want to buy it because they are doing things right. Okay. So, hey, real, that's that's great analysis. Do you, last question, and I don't know if you have time, but do you think the Qs are going to make their last high and then actually make their their high for earlier last year or last year again or not? Well, let me tell you, the irony of this whole thing is if the Qs go above seventy point fifty eight, that's only it's less than one point away. Right. It makes leg D in the monthly chart. It starts to get into that very strong resistance. It makes leg D in, in the weekly chart in one of the patterns. And I, this is textbook. I've never seen this. It's gone from the low, most recent low of November the, the 16th. It's gone peak A, B, C, D. I call it E, F, G. But this is really A, B, C. And it could be D if it goes above 70.17. What you'll get right. then is a D in the weekly going back to the E of uh, 70.58 in the weekly. You'll get the monthly breaking to a new high, and the stochastic will probably be close to 80% then, and the MACD could turn up. So I'd be hesitant right now to be short the Qs. Yeah, I'm actually long, and I'm trying to figure out if I should be getting out. <laughs> uh, well, you know what? I would not. You know, Apple's coming out, and that's obviously going to affect the Qs, but there are other stocks in the Qs that must be doing very well. So yeah. let's... Uh, it'll be tomorrow when we look at this again. All I can say to you is, I personally, I know I, sh I shouldn't say this, but I'd want to hang on to the cues because everything about this says it should make leg D in the weekly and maybe leg D in the monthly. Okay. But I'm not sure. I'm just saying that's the way I'm looking at it right now. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks so much for calling, Mark. I didn't really <laughs> help you, but I hope I helped you. No, but everything helps me when you talk. You're, you're, you're very good at this. So thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate okay. the call. Let's go to Mohammed in Glendale, California, and we are looking at... Hi, how are you, Mohammed? Hi, how are you doing, Basil? Thank I'm you doing well. Call. You wanted Wonderful. to go look at FlowServe, huh? F-L-S. Now, do you have a position? No, I was just looking at it. You know, the last couple of days has been forming some dojis at the bottom. I was wondering if it uh, continues to slide down or is it going to bounce from here? I think you've got a really good question there, and I think I've got the answer for you. Folks, we're going to look at FLS. That's Flow Serve Core. It's trading at 153.21, only up 13 cents after a terrific dive to the downside. I'll be right back with Mohammed. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil's subscribers closed out a short position in Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. 
If you'd like to try out Basil Chapman's newsletter, the opening call, then visit the front page at TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, the opening call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program, the Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern on TFNN. Tom O'Brien's weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, has helped subscribers for over 10 years navigate the high-risk world of exploring and producing gold companies. And now's a great time to sign up for a free month-long trial to see the kind of insight that Tom delivers for his subscribers on a weekly basis. Every Monday, Tom O'Brien issues a quick update on the metal market, giving you his take on the HUI, XAU, GLD, dollar bonds, and much more. Tom follows Monday's update with a full gold report which is delivered to subscribers Tuesday afternoon with detailed coverage of 24 separate gold or metal stocks as well as another 10 to 15 stocks that he lets you know are on his potential watch list. Get your month-long free trial to the gold report today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Don't spend another year navigating the metal markets on your own. Act early in 2013 and make the most of your gold and metal market investments. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Let me tell you something, folks. I have people coming up to me saying, I just can't believe the amount of work that Steve does on his newsletter. Yeah. And I says, I absolutely agree. That is a recent clip from the Money Masters show that Tom and I do each day at TFNN. My newsletter service, Mastering Probability, is much, much more than a newsletter. Yes, it's outperformed the S&P 500 by 100% during the last 15 months. But more importantly, it's an extraordinary education, a roadmap for your success and it's yours risk-free for the next 30 days. Just go to the homepage of TFNN.com and click on my name, Steve Rhodes, and then Mastering Probability, because everyone needs a success strategy. For most, it's a competitive edge, the will to win, the drive to overcome any obstacle. Whatever you call it, winners find a way. Find your way to Mastering Probability today, because your journey to extraordinary rewards is just one click away. This segment is brought to you by Backtech Environmental. For more information, just click the Backtech banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, we're back. We're back with Mohammed in Glendale, California. We're looking at FLS, Frank, Larry, Sam, and that's at 153 down 8 cents. Now, what's really important to me is that there was this beautiful doji candle. There are times when I need just one or two candles. That's all I need. This is the candle right here, that doji, skinny little doji candle at 162.61. And what I'm looking at is I just need to see if there are any round numbers there. And let me just check here. So that went, oh, I remember this one, A, B, C. I wasn't sure about the wave count because it was very unusual to get a B and then a B failure. And uh, so I've, I've skipped. Uh, I'll have to go over this again. I must have missed something in my rush to do it recently. But what I'm looking at here, so, so Mohammed, you don't have a position, right? You're looking at it? Yeah, I'm just looking at it. You know, I'm going to make a recommendation about the stock. Everything about the weekly and the monthly says that they should still be further. Uh, uh, and um, even if there's a bit of a bounce, I don't think you're just playing it for a quick bounce. You're looking at for it as a trade, maybe a couple of weeks or something like that, Correct. or longer. 
Because yes. if that's the case, I would be looking at the short side. I'd wait for it to bounce to 158. It's a 153. Between 155 and a half to 157 and a half, maybe 158. That's the area that I would expect that it makes an, a, an arch formation and comes back down. I Everything about the weekly says that it's going to drag the monthly, which has been really good with a stochastic at 94%. It looks to me like flow serve, and I can't remember what they do. There's some, um, they direct water, correct. something like that, right? Yeah, correct. Yeah. So That's what real. I'm looking at, and I have an alternate wave count, B slash F, in the weekly, in the monthly chart, and I've specially left it like that. I suspect, in fact, it's... It, Technically, it's still looking very strong in the monthly, but I my guess is that the ugly bar of the week of the 4th of January with a high of 153.90, which is just about where it is, and a low of 142.71, somewhere inside there is going to get down, and that's where it will find support. I'm just going to suggest I don't think you're going to miss out anything on the upside. I would be looking at this only as a bounce for three, four points, but I'd be then looking at it as a potential short with a move down of about seven to ten points to the downside. So hold off if you're looking to go long. Okay. Thank you so okay. much, Matt. Okay, very good. Now, just one real quick uh, quick thing into the uh, into the den. I just wanted to show this NQM. Uh, I wanted to show... I wanted to show Bob that um, we're looking at, uh, let me see, I don't believe there are any more callers. No. Uh, yeah, this is the, the NQM. This is the NASDAQ 100 um, E-minis. They're just about to break out the resistance point in leg C in the 30-minute chart. MACD is good. Stochastic is good. This is very powerful action. Now, the other thing I wanted to do just in the moment, I had a question in the den quickly. Uh, I did the rut. The, uh, I had the rut. Oh, someone asked me a question, and I promised uh, would you please take a look at the TSLA for Lee? Yes. TS Tesla, Tesla Motors. Now, this is very interesting. It's in a leg, extended leg D. In the, they haven't, they've barely sold anything. They've got huge expenses. The car is fantastic. It's just a beautiful looking car. I've got it in the weekly chart. I'm going to be, I'm going to call it G slash A for now, not C, uh, G slash C. But we, so everything about us is that we could be coming, becoming very extended at this particular point. Now, that means on a technical basis, the MACD, the stochastic, and the, um, in, in the, in the, in the weekly chart is, is moving together with the price. It's made a cup and a handle breakout. And that's the one that I'm always a little bit nervous of, but this is beautiful. I would say this. If you're long, I don't know if you're long. If you're long, I would... Oh, I might regret this, but I'm going to suggest take a little bit off right now at, 60, at 5175 and just to, to reward yourself, I would not be shorting it, but I take a little bit off now, and tomorrow we'll look at it in greater detail, but that's what my recommendation is right this moment. Thanks for being a stay tuned for the Options Hour. I believe we've got Sean Dolan. Great, great show coming up, and I'll be back tomorrow. I'll be back with Tom. Are you